All right, I think we've finally broken the back of this beast and uh, we'll put the propeller on and push it outside for a test run. So she's all complete. Um, and uh, just thought, briefly go over some of the latest details. As you can see, we've got the reconditioned baffles on and there was an ugly bit of metal that was uh, pop riveted in there. So I've actually replaced that with some fiberglass and filled that in, that looks nice. Got the LCH decals on and uh, come up with a bit of a brainwave here. And I used this really nice rubber trim. And, you know, we pulled off the old rubber, which was pretty hard and, and crispy. And look at that, that's just beautiful. What a nice solution for the, the baffle seal. Fits perfectly and it allows that little bit of sponge there, gives plenty of uh, sealing, um, fills the gap, gives you a nice seal. So I'm very happy with that and I think that looks great. Our cockpit, uh, just reach around here, you can see we've got our AFR gauge there, which I'll put a little placard on and we've got our coolant temperature there. So that's in, AFR coolant, and we've got oil pressure here. So that all looks good. We've got our mixture control, throttle control. I've reallocated the choke cable for a primer. I'll placard that, so that's pull for prime. And then the relocated the, the flap switch there, which should be quite convenient. I reckon you'll be able to operate the throttle and reach over and operate the flaps while you're on approach. The last phase here is gonna be interesting. So we've got a vacuum pump there. Now the reason I've got, I've got the vacuum pump hooked to the header tank and I've got a little interrupter washer in there that's allowing the uh, vacuum to pull on the header tank but not leak out the cap. Hopefully that'll work, I'm about to try it. And the way it works is, he has this uh, airline va Venturi system which creates a vacuum and it pulls vacuum out of the, you connect it to the, uh, the header tank or the cooling system and you vacuum the, all the air out of the cooling system um, dry and then you, you shut off a valve to trap that vacuum in. You then take that vacuum line with the shut off valve and plonk it into a bucket of coolant. And then you open the valve and it sucks all the coolant in and it's, in theory it should be you know almost a, a perfect solution. So I thought to myself, well I don't need to buy that Venturi system create a vacuum, I've got a vacuum pump. So I'm gonna turn on the vacuum pump now and I'm going to vacuum the system for a few minutes. Maybe I'll give it a while. Get all the, as much of the air out as I possibly can. And then what I'll do is I'll clamp this line with a, you know, with a G clamp and then drop it into the coolant bucket, which is a measured amount of coolant, which these things take about three and a half litres to four litres of coolant, and then see how much it sucks in. Hopefully that'll fix the, the bleeding issues, um, which, which uh, that should make bleeding a, a doddle. Certainly my customer said it, it worked perfectly. So we'll give it a shot. Now I'd imagine my vacuum pump's gonna pull better than a, his Venturi, but it should work equally as well. Um, so that's that. We'll give that a shot. Um, otherwise, once that I've got the coolant in, we'll top up some oil. We'll push it outside and uh, put the propeller on, of course. Push it outside and fire it up. I'm also happy with the reduced size header tank. I reckon that's a keeper. It doesn't need to be a long cylinder that I've used on other ones, even though that holds more capacity. The reason we used a header tank like this is because the, we did, just didn't have enough room across here for all the with all the alternator and everything in the way. So we made a smaller one, but I reckon we'd use that on others. And as you see, we've just welded a bracket on the back of that, and it's very convenient for mounting. Also, you see we've got a welded um, a radiator cap base, which is a standard item you can buy, and just welded that on. So anyway, let's vacuum the system out, and maybe I'll come back and show, once the vacuum's formed, how it um, pulls the coolant in. And we're already pulling a vacuum. You can see all the hoses are flat. But I'm going to keep sucking for a bit longer. And then uh, what I'm going to do is use that clamp there. And I'm going to clamp that hose, that black hose. And then once I'm done there, I'm going to drop it into that five litre container of uh, coolant. Uh, I'll be back soon to drop that vacuum line into the coolant. Then I'm going to take the clamp off and then hopefully all the coolant gets sucked into the system. We are experimenting on the fly here. So let's do it. All right, so that worked perfectly. Can you hear that? That's the sound of that little Bosch water pump buzzing away and basically no air in the system at all. The water circulating nicely in the header tank, that's beautiful. We're good to go, so I'm gonna throw this prop on now.
and uh, we'll push her outside and we'll, we'll fire it up and test all the systems, make sure everything's working. So here we are in the, <coughs> excuse me, the cockpit of the Zenith. You can see that the AFR meter right there is booting up. That's uh, war pre-warming the oxygen Bosch oxygen sensor. And you see there. Before I do that, you see the AFR is flashing 20. That's 20 to one. That's a uh, maximum lean, impossibly lean, but uh, that's what it's doing there because obviously the engine's not running. So there's no fuel or fuel elements mixed in with the uh, with the air so it's measuring just the air so that's maximum lean uh, here's my primer you pull it to prime and you've got to make sure you push it away so it doesn't keep the TBI primer on it is spring loaded but it's just a good idea to push it back so you'll hear the fuel pump change note when I pull it let's listen and that should be plenty of fuel um, all right, here we go. Clear prop. Do it. And as you can see, you've got my coolant temperature there. Not even 40 degrees yet. Uh, air fuel ratio mixture.
all right well that was all good so uh yeah i find that it uh just about a centimeter or maybe 15 millimeters away from the firewall at full throttle will give us about 13 13 and a half to one on the air fuel mixture air fuel ratio and uh, that gives us best performance any leaner than that and droops a little bit and any richer than that and it droops a little bit um, so yeah and through the mid-range there it's a little bit richer but that's okay because once you settle into cruise you can start to lean this off and uh, fly with your best cruise well once you're in cruise you can lean it as, as much as you like um, but through the transition it's a, it's going to be rich and but you're really mainly interested in the performance at full power but that's all working good as you can see we've got you know some issues with these two EGTs perhaps three this one's gone sort of dead again so I'm not sure what the customer wants to do about that we may need to look at replacing I don't know it's a bit it's a bit hard to say how good what condition they're in they seem to be a bit inconsistent I'll fire it up again and you'll see what I mean about these Yeah, running well. Uh, temperatures are good. About it. Oh, that was what I was going to say. We repitched the propeller a couple of degrees so that at wide open throttle, it's only just kissing on 2800, which is a good, uh, from experience, a good starting point. So what I've done is we've added uh, two degrees of pitch or so and made all the blades the same with an electronic protractor. Uh, it seems to be quite happy. It's uh, maxing out full power about 28, so that'll be a, a good starting point for the next test. Say 28 static on these things is pretty typical, but needs a test flight for that. She's looking good. It's running well. So uh, these are the EG2 thermocouples here. This is uh, two, four, and cylinder number six. And on this side, I've got cylinders uh one two and three there hanging down now what we did was we got our little blow torch there this little baby here and it just worked out that if i ran this thing flat out which is not a particularly large flame and the hottest i could get them was about um about 1100 uh maybe yeah just over a thousand and they're all very consistent except for this one uh so this one wouldn't really register properly at all these these two here and the three on the other side here uh, were all very consistent so no issues with these the they're not so consistent in the lower temperature but up in the higher temperatures they are very consistent all peaking out at about a little bit over a thousand maybe 11 uh, sorry, 1,050. Um, so, yeah, this one I'll replace. Um, and uh, that's about as good as we can do. I think I've got a K-type thermocouple we can put there.